in everyday lives, this time learning what keeps the poles apart. I'm not pretending that this match between Krakowia and Wisla Krakow is one of the most glamorous ties in Europe. It isn't. This is not the Camp Nou. But it is a top-of-the-table clash between two teams celebrating their centenary. Not wishing to take anything away from Warsaw, but Krakow is the cultural, historical and spiritual heart of Poland. Trust me, it's also the cradle of Polish football. The whole world likes to kick, and so does Poland. Football is very popular in Poland. Yeah, we are a football country because football is the most popular discipline in here. No matter what happens, uh, you know, league can be really shitty, but it will be much more popular than English League or Spanish League. The history of those matches uh, dates back uh, 80 years. It's called Holy War. Uh, so it's of special importance to all players and also for supporters it has a special significance. It's all about who will have the right to walk proudly around the streets of Krakow for the next six months. Since it all began exactly a hundred years ago, here on Buania Common, it's been a fixture groaning with history. A niggly squabble in a city still coming to terms with a traumatic century. Although it is without doubt a well-preserved medieval fairyland, Krakow has shaky foundations. The city's founder, King Krak, made the mistake of building his castle on top of a dragon's lair, a dragon fond of eating virgins. Luckily, the king had a clever cobbler called Scuba, who offered the dragon a sheep stuffed with sulphur. And we all know what happens when you swallow too much sulphur. It brings on a terrible thirst. So, he comes down here, drinks a ridiculous amount of the river Visla and a couple of swans, and promptly bursts. End of dragon, and the people of Krakow are very happy. Well, until the next invasion. Some time ago, we wanted to organize here in Krakow a rally for all those virgins who managed to escape the dragon. But it didn't work out, as one said she was ill, and the other said she would not go on her own. Ah, yes, are all full of shit. Well, I guess every man here in Krakow has a bit of a dragon hidden inside. <laughs> If there was one way to describe the Poles, it would have to be long-suffering. Not only have they endured Nazi occupation and communist tyranny, but over the years this square has been terrorised by Tatar armies, Prussians, Russians, Dragons, Austrians, even the Swedes. Not once, but many times. I mean, the Swedes don't invade anybody. They are so used to being invaded, they keep a permanent lookout in the Tower of St Mary's Church. Krakow's bugler bugles every hour on the hour, a tradition that dates back to the 13th century when the original bugler got an enemy arrow in the neck, which is why, to this day, his tune is cut short. Have you ever fallen asleep when you were supposed to be bugling? Do you like football? Well, yes, I am a football fan, but generally just a fan of Wisla here in Krakow. 
Other than that, I'm not really that much into football. But my fellow bugler, the guy I work with normally, he is a huge football fan. At the beginning of the 20th century, Poland was divvied up between Prussia, Russia and Austria. Thanks to the benign Austrians, the people of Krakow were free to dabble in all sorts of nonsense, the arts, cabaret and football. Krakowia, in the red and white stripes, were founded in 1906 by a bunch of bored expats. Rivals Wisla Krakow, called after the river that snakes through Poland, were formed four months later by staunch locals. Although Krakowia won the first Polish league in 1921, they've only just emerged from decades of obscurity to challenge Wisla, who are now the dominant force in the country. The city has been starved of the league derby since 1984. In the brutal parlance of the terraces, Wisla Krakow are known as the dogs, while Krakowia are vilified as the Jews. I'm a little puzzled by the Jewish reference, but what's the story with the dogs? The reason why the Krakowia fans call Wisla the dogs is uh, simple, although not too nice, because, uh, you know, the, I know, maybe in the whole world, the police is called the dogs, and uh, Wisla... Or the pigs. Or the pigs, maybe, but they are, in Poland, the dogs, so... After, after the war, the Wisła was uh, related to the police. That was a police club, actually. Just like in the USSR, all old club names disappeared. Wisla, Krakowia, Rusz, Legia, they all disappeared, and new ones like Railway Man, Miner, Chemist, member of a cooperative, etc., were introduced for all teams in Poland. Wisla became a part of Gwardia, or the cops, and changed into a police club. Krakowia were of no interest to the army, the police or the railways. No, they were adopted by the nutrition department, which was hardly the most repressive wing of the regime. And that's one of the reasons why this week I'm leaning towards them. Krakowia was a club of Bohemia and Intelligentsia, and very open to the nationalist cause at the same time. Let me just remind you that 14 different nationalities lived then in Krakow, which is a part of Austria-Hungary. The first Krakowia team was first of all made up of Poles, but also Czechs, English, Jews, Austrians, Germans and Hungarians. But when young fans shed Krakow, Jews or Krakowia, a Jewish club, it is just a sign of sheer stupidity and total lack of knowledge of history. But this club would be represented with a liberal, tolerant strain in Polish society, would that be correct? I would say so, yes. yes. I would say so. Yeah. So you're all just a bunch of bohemians. <laughs> yeah. okay. I felt it was my duty to find out what Polish bohemians actually do. They even would say that the communists are running...